Hi, I'm Gagan. Understanding data sanitization methods is crucial for passing your certification exams like CISSP and essential for your success as a cybersecurity professional. Let's start with a fundamental concept, data remnants. This refers to the residual data that remains on storage media even after attempts to erase or delete it. When you delete a file on your server, you're not actually erasing the data. You're just removing the file's entry in the system's directory. And this happens across all storage types, hard drives, SSDs, USB drives, and even cloud storage. This creates significant security vulnerabilities. With the right tools, attackers can recover these deleted files containing sensitive information like authentication credentials and encryption keys personal and regulated data, including financial records, intellectual property, and business critical assets. These breaches can lead to identity theft, financial losses, and major damage to your organization's reputation. Data sanitization is the process of deliberately, permanently, and irreversibly removing or destroying data from storage media to prevent unauthorized access. Unlike standard deletion, proper sanitization ensures that no residual data can be recovered even with specialized forensic tools or advanced recovery techniques. According to NIST, there are three primary methods of data sanitization, each providing a different level of protection. First is clearing. Clearing is your baseline sanitization method that renders data unrecoverable via standard interfaces. This involves writing patterns of ones and zeros over existing data making it inaccessible through normal file system operations. NIST specifically recommends overwriting all addressable locations on the media at least once for the clearing method to be effective. While it's relatively quick and cost-effective using freely available software tools, it is important that you understand that the data might still be recoverable using specialized forensic tools or advanced recovery techniques. This is precisely why Clearing alone is insufficient for sensitive information. Clearing can be used for internal device reuse within your organization. When there is low risk data that wouldn't cause significant harm if exposed and for regular maintenance during system cleanup operations. But remember, clearing alone isn't enough protection for confidential information or any device leaving your organization's control. Next is purging. Purging is a data sanitization process that ensures data is rendered unrecoverable even with advanced forensic recovery techniques. It involves using logical or physical methods to eliminate data from storage media, making recovery infeasible. Unlike clearing, purging provides a higher level of security and is suitable for scenarios where the media may leave an organization's control or when handling highly sensitive information. There are three key purging approaches degaussing, cryptographic erasure, and secure erase commands. Degaussing uses powerful magnetic fields to disrupt the magnetic alignment of storage media, effectively neutralizing the data stored on magnetic devices, such as hard disk drives and magnetic tapes. It is highly effective for magnetic media, often rendering the device permanently unusable. However, it does not work on non-magnetic storage technologies like solid-state drives or optical disk. When using decausing, consider the power of the decauser. It needs to be strong enough to match the resistance level of the media to fully erase the data. Cryptographic erasure involves encrypting all data on a device and then securely destroying the encryption keys. Without the key, the encrypted data becomes mathematically irrecoverable. This method is particularly effective for modern devices that support full disk encryption. It is applicable to all storage types, including SSDs, HDDs, and cloud storage. Cryptographic erasure requires pre-encryption of data before storage. If encryption was not enabled beforehand, this method cannot be applied retroactively. Proper key management practices are essential to prevent unauthorized access to encryption keys. Weak or compromised key management can lead to unauthorized access, undermining the effectiveness of cryptographic erasure. Organizations must therefore implement robust policies for key generation, storage, and destruction. In cloud environments, cryptographic erasure is often the only feasible option due to the lack of physical access to storage media. Next is secure erase commands. 
Many modern storage devices, especially SSDs, include built-in secure erase commands that instruct the controller to reset all storage cells or purge data from over-provisioned areas. This method is essential for flash-based media like SSDs because traditional overwriting techniques may not erase all data due to algorithms and over-provisioned memory. Secure erase commands vary by manufacturer and may require vendor-specific tools. Forensic recovery risks are minimal if you properly execute those secure erase commands. And they're certainly suitable for organizations that handle sensitive data on SSDs. The purging methods that we discussed are certainly recommended when devices will be reused outside your organizational security boundary, where you're handling sensitive company information that could lead to reputational or financial harm if exposed. And you have compliance requirements because of regulatory frameworks like GDPR or HIPAA that mandates higher levels of data sanitization. Next is destruction. Physical destruction is the most definitive approach rendering storage media completely incapable of storing data. Key destruction methods are shredding, pulverization or disintegration, incineration or melting. Shredding uses industrial shredders specifically designated for electronic media to physically tear storage devices into small fragments. The security level is determined by the resulting particle size. Smaller fragments provide greater assurance against data reconstruction. Shredding specifications vary significantly depending on media type. HDDs typically require particles of 2 mm or smaller, while SSDs and high density flash media may require much finer shredding due to their dense storage architecture. Many organizations use NIST guidelines to determine appropriate particle size for different media types. Pulverization uses crushers, grinders, or specialized machines with cutting knives to reduce media to dust or very fine particles. It is considered more thorough than standard shredding, significantly reducing the risk of data reconstruction. Pulverization often requires specialized equipment and may need to be performed by certified third-party vendors to ensure compliance for destroying media used for classified data. While extremely effective, it is generally slower and more expensive than shredding. Incineration destroys media using high temperatures either through combustion or melting, often reducing it to ash. It results in complete destruction of the media with virtually no chance of recovery. Incineration must be performed in specialized facilities equipped to handle toxic fumes released by certain materials. Environmental regulations may apply and proper filtration systems are essential when using incineration. Many organizations outsource this process to facilities with proper environmental controls and certifications. Destruction is necessary when you're dealing with highly sensitive or classified data, when storage media has reached end of life, when regulations explicitly require physical destructions, or your media is damaged or inoperable, making other sanitization methods unreliable, and you absolutely need to be sure that data cannot be recovered. Regardless of the destruction method used, proper verification and documentations are critical. Many regulations require certificates of destruction as evidence of proper sanitization, particularly for regulated data types. Choosing the right data sanitization method should be based on data sensitivity and classification, storage media type and its characteristics, any applicable regulatory frameworks, and the device's intended future. It could be reuse, transfer, or disposal. As a cybersecurity professional, it is really essential that you adopt a risk-based approach. Data that is more sensitive requires more comprehensive sanitization techniques. Let's summarize the key sanitization methods that we've covered today. This table represents your complete toolkit for ensuring data is properly removed from storage media. At level one, we have clearing through overwriting, perfect for internal reuse, but vulnerable to advanced recovery techniques. Level two offers three purging methods, degaussing for magnetic media, cryptographic erasure for encrypted devices, and secure erase commands for modern storage like SSDs. For the highest security, level three provides destruction methods, shredding devices into fragments, pulverization into fine particles, or complete incineration. Remember, your method selection should always consider four key factors, data sensitivity, media type, regulatory requirements, 
and devices intended future. By implementing these methods with a comprehensive data sanitization policy, you create a final line of defense that completes your security strategy, ensuring your data truly ceases to exist when its life cycle ends. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next cybersecurity video. Thanks.